Audi's all-new A3 range has finally arrived in Australia, including an all-new high-performance flagship variant. And the new lineup promises to bring the same combination of style, practicality and performance that people have grown to expect from the model. So I've popped down to Tasmania to... Is this something a bit familiar? Is it, is it just me or... is the S3, the 2022 version, a car I'm not completely unfamiliar with. Is he even that sounded familiar? What's going on? Ah, ah, wait. This is the Audi S3, the 2021 version, a car that I'm not completely unfamiliar with. Yes, of course, the S3, this version is the very same that I drove six months ago in the UK. And I'm delighted because it brings all of the same mechanical bits and pieces finally to the Australian market. And that includes that amazing two litre turbocharged triple eight engine up front, 228 kilowatts and a lovely rounded 400 newton meters of torque. And when you get your right foot stuck in, this car feels every bit as quick as the 4.8 seconds it's claimed to get to 100 in. Other key differences are this car now rolls on adaptive dampers, not the magnetic dampers of the previous generation, and that's made a huge difference to the ride at both ends of the spectrum. On cruising roads like this, it is noticeably more comfortable, but when you get really stuck into the twisty, lovely Tasmanian roads, there also seems to be more bandwidth. It's really changed the character of this car. And of course, it's a quattro, which means all wheel drive, and there's that lovely new clever clutch system that deals with all the torque going to the rear and front axle very cleverly. It doesn't intervene too quickly. It just manages that torque transfer really carefully and really speedily. There's also some really great upgrades for the cabin as well. I've got this full Audi virtual cockpit digital instrument cluster, which has proliferated the entire Audi range now. There's tons of information there, but if that wasn't enough, I've got this lovely, huge touchscreen in the middle as well. Beneath that, I've got another digital display for the HVAC. This feels technologically really grown up. The quality of the interior materials is also top notch, just what you'd expect from the Audi, and ergonomically, I'm really enjoying it as well but dynamically this car has really grown up as well. Pushing it through some of these brilliant Tasmanian roads, there's an absolute confidence that you get from the Quattro system, and I feel like it's not compromising by finding too much grip. There's a really good combination of the choice of tires and those 19 inch wheels, and I find that I can just lean on the front end. There's tons of front end grip, but then it sort of distributes the power to the rear as I need it. There's other four-wheel drive systems from rivals that don't deal with that whole torque transition as well. The Quattro, though, has really built a reputation for itself. But I was worried this car would feel a little too sterile, a little too capable. But the S3 now has more charisma than it's ever had before. And I love that engine. It's only four cylinders, but somehow the engineers have made it sound like a five. I don't, know, I don't know how they've done it. It's obviously clever augmented sound coming through the stereo a little bit, but I absolutely love the effect. Some other interpretations of augmented engine sound sound completely dishonest and unbelievable, but this, they've done such a great job. The S3 offers quite a comprehensive package, especially if you look at its rivals in the small hatchback and sedan high performance market. But the price is something that's particularly good. This car starts at about $70,000 for the Sportback in Australia and about three grand more for the sedan. But when you compare it with that version I drove in the UK, it suddenly looks like an absolute bargain. In the UK, they have an entry level spec S3 and a couple of variants above that with better spec levels. The entry level, which doesn't get any of this equipment, costs about the same as this car in Australia, about $70,000. To go up to the next one, you need to add the Vorsprung pack. In Australia, our specification cars basically get that kit included for nothing. And in the UK, if you add that, they'll cost you the equivalent of $83,500. So for me, this car is a bit of a bargain. I absolutely love the S3. The first time I drove it six months ago in the UK, I really fell for it. And I don't think it's ever been as dynamically perfect. 
it really puts a good distance between its RS3 big brother, but also the other entry level A3s. And never before has the S3 stood alone more strongly in its own performance credentials. But more importantly, I don't think the S3 has ever deserved the S badge more than that first generation all those years ago.